Hey guys, welcome to the Bear Bottom Acres up in northern Minnesota. Our 40 acres of wilderness and wonderful. Thanks so much for joining us today. Wilderness and wonderful. Wilderness and wonderful. <laughs> he, he apparently did not like that intro. <laughs> it, it just does not seem to be Am like proper English. Wonderful. Do you okay. want to come see our wonderful? <laughs> yeah. A big part of the land is made up of open areas. Uh, a lot of it was covered with brush. It's been 40 years since anyone's really been up here. And so you can see from this picture, some of it has been knocked down um, and some of it is still in place. There's also several, several acres of forest. And then we have, as you'll see in a little bit, an area with two ponds and a little creek. So we've got a little bit of everything here. So what we're going to do with this video is we're going to take you around both on the ground and in the air, show you what we have, and tell you more about what we're planning to do with it. Hey girl. So you can kind of see how clear and open it is on this side. And just to show you what it looked like before, over on this side of the field has not been cleared. So a lot of overgrowth over there. Um, luckily we had Brandon come over and in less than an hour, here this tractor coming in and pulling, I mean, this huge tractor, tires above my head. And he comes back and there's a trailer behind it. All of a sudden hydraulics go down. And six big plates just And in less than an hour, you know, you're gonna see footage throughout this video of what he cleared. And he's also gonna clear some other brush for us over the winter, closer to the ponds, where they'll freeze over and he can drive some heavy machinery back there. And, uh, you know, time is such a scarce commodity. You know, I spent a whole day carving one path and he clears a whole field in less than an hour. Yeah. We're gonna find tons of win-win situations. So also, in the future, look for references to Brandon because I love the kid. He's just a great resource for us in helping us on this journey. You know what's over here, right? What's over there? This is our big pile of dead trees. Um, dead cut down a ton of things. There's kind of roots everywhere. This is the path that Kevin's cutting. He's, we've kind of determined that this is the fastest way to the narrowest part between the two ponds. Um, that would be the most likely place for us to build a bridge to get across to the other side. Okay, way back there is our container that we're staying in temporarily. Right now it's kind of acting as our warming house since it's so cold outside. And you can still hear dogs barking, can't you, even though we don't have any. Ozzy and I got the Fetford Porter Potty. We understand its physics and what needs to be done. Let's put <laughs> it right by the main road. Yeah. This is our fire pit cooking area. So it is not much. Not much, it's not super fancy. Back here is one of our forested areas. There's a couple of acres of wood um, and we have at least twice this much on the other side of the creek. And it has been literally decades since anyone has been up here. We do have a lot of old trees that uh, we need to clear out of here to make it more safe and to open up some of the space for the baby trees. But back this way is part of our forest, just from a different side. Let's head back there and see what we can find. Back here in the woods, it's a little wet even in here from all the rain that we've been having. But a nice quiet place. A lot of birch and pine back here with some oak trees. It's a lot more light now that some of the leaves have already started to fall. Looks like we've got the ruins of another old tree stand back here. Ah, I hear roosters. 
back here I am finding a couple of maple trees um, but not as many as I would like so we're gonna definitely add some because we want to be able to tap them for syrup in the future back here is it is appears to be another pile of rocks and junk back here in the woods so another dump pile maybe so back here is the well that we found and um, the old farm site. This is the old foundation. Um, there's another one way back in the overgrowth there and we've got a couple of previous videos about this. Oh this is really full, holy cow. So one of the things that we found here was a well and what's kind of cool about it is the level that it's at right now. So I know down at the bottom of it we kind of saw the bottom and I know there's an old tire in there and there's a chain down there so so when you see the water this high, no wonder it's soppy, you know, down there by the ponds. But this is kind of a cool indicator to just see at this time of year how much water is uh, in this clay. <laughs> Back there, we're gonna have hoop houses, we're gonna have the gardening and stuff behind my left shoulder. That's where we're going to have animals in the future. Yeah. And there'll be kind of a service road that goes straight down. This is one of the areas that Kevin and I have chosen to eventually set up some hoop houses. Um, we've got one where we put some tarp on there. They're planning on starting to grow some stuff up here next season. So, you know, putting this black tarp on, and just kicking her foot, the ground looks a lot more black than the brown clay that we seem to uncover everywhere else. Picked off, but compared to a lot of the land that's around here, yeah, that is much blacker dirt. But still, to clear all of this, we don't have this much black tarp. Next year, we might get a burning permit and burn a lot of this brush. And then also with our neighbor Brandon, disc some of it up so we can definitely do more planting up here next year than what we got done this year now that we've got shelter. Over on this side, we'll show you where we're gonna be having an orchard in the future. We're gonna be yep. doing apples. Um, Bare bottom acres, apple cider. Well, okay. hard cider? Maybe, um, but definitely apples at a very minimum. those also fruit bushes um, this is like perfect blueberry territory up here so we're definitely gonna have some blueberries up that way too is where we're gonna have the house when we get this pathway in front of us cleared out toward the ponds um, when we have ducks it's gonna they're gonna love it we see ducks and geese flying off there all the time all day long having our own ducks here is gonna be just great Yeah, it's totally pink. It sticks out, it's beautiful. Are you, so you're gonna save those for the deer and the bear? Yeah. <laughs> this will not be part of Bear Bottom Acres cider in the future. So back that way, just by that big oak tree, is the northeast corner of the land. Every so often, we are finding these enormous ant hills. So back, back here is a survey marker. Um, our neighbor had his property surveyed, so it helps us now to understand one of our boundaries. So this is the far northern edge of our property back here. There's a path that uh, he made that's pretty much right along the border. This is one of several old tree stands that we found around here. This homestead, this former farmstead, has been basically abandoned for like 40 years. 
found some garbage piles. We'll link to that video up here. You can watch one of our Homestead garbage pile digs. We found a lot of rock piles. This is the deer stand that my dad assembled. Link to the video up there. You can check out the process of how we put this up on a very cold day. But he designed it good for families, good for kids. I mean, each year we're gonna knock out some projects. Your job will allow us to have a steady income but we do have to pay some things off along the way that will just make it where we can stay in the storage container um, for half a year, three quarters of a year while the house is being built. Still have to hash out exactly what we want for a house, harvest stuff from the land and process it. And you know, the goal would be for me to lose the safety of a full-time income and figure out how to make money off the land year round. It's one thing to give a like, it's one thing to subscribe to a channel, but to actually open up their their pocketbook and give you money, you know, <laughs> when you have this idea and say you can execute it, but then, you know, 90% of it is marketing and finding somebody who would buy, you know, the stuff that you have. So if we're doing farming, um, you know, who's gonna buy it? And it's gonna take a while to kind of figure out those markets, you know, the transparency of everything that we're doing, I think will, you know, help build a market and loyalty. That is what the goal is, you know, so we can live up there. But we're gonna be reducing a lot of expenses too. So instead of hobbies, the hobbies are going to be the work. Work 12, 13 hour days where you're enjoying what you do. All right, so we're kind of wrapping up this year you guys got to see maybe understand our situation a little bit more as far as going back and forth from the Twin Cities and commuting we're learning lessons down there to bring up here we get really excited so we're totally irrational like it, like hey you want to go look for some land mm -hmm. okay jump in and we'll figure it out as we go it's kind of good that this transition period holds us back and we can make more informed decisions and wiser decisions and kind of build as we go.